Thanks for staying with us. Now, in, in all of Africa, with over 1.3 billion, less than 30,000 COVID-19 vaccines um, shots have been administered. Some may argue that Africa does not have many COVID uh, cases as the rest of the world, but that is not entirely true because South Africa has had about 1.43 million COVID-19 cases with zero vaccine jabs. And Israel has had about 622,000 cases, but over 4 million vaccine sh shots have been given. Now, this is immunity inequality. And, you know, our guest wrote this article. This is except from the article that was written by our guest in January 29th. Now, if they say that we have over 90 million Nigerians living in abject poverty, what would be the hope of these Nigerians should COVID-19 vaccine be made mandatory? That's our question for tonight. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. All right, so AK, when you read this article written by Tijani Mayawa, what came to your mind? Well, I, 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 like, the, I like his thinking, and, and I think it's one of the things that I, I want to explore as to what even prompted him to, to look at it from that light. Because when you, when you talk about COVID, you know, most people don't go to the social impact that it has you know, and trying to look at if, if these vaccines come, who are the first people that would get it, you know, and, and what role does poverty or what role does wealth status play mm -hmm. in getting it? So what I really want to get into is really his mind and, and what led him to the things that he wrote. So for me, I, I think um, when I saw this um, article, I was just thinking, you know, because whether we like it or not, sooner than later, this COVID uh, vaccines, for you to be able to do anything, might become very mandatory, right? You, they will tell you you can't, you can't, you can't travel, you can't um, mainly travel. You know, you can't go to other countries without having that jab. You know, and given what mm -hmm. we talked about about the cost of um, testing, right? That is wow. off the roof. Tell me about it. I'm wondering, <laughs> fifty thousand naira for test alone. I don't know if they now bring the vaccine. You know, just in case they bring the vaccine and they tell you that you have to pay money i'm wondering like how much would you be paying you understand so it makes no sense to me and i'd love to hear you know how this vaccine uh, drive is is, is driving in uh, immunity inequality in nigeria but let me come to jennifer jennifer um so what, what came to your mind when you read the article is jennifer there I think we're losing Jennifer. <laughs> All right, so I, I, I um, let me just bring in our guest, um, Tijani. Like we rightly said, is the is the brain behind the article that we're we're we're, we're discussing today, and um, he is a journalist with the Cable Network. I think. Thank you so much for joining us, Tijani. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so you heard our little banter on the conversation. For me, I I think. Um, I don't know, it's a bittersweet feeling for me because I know that um, we had talked, um, I think last week or so, we talked about what Bill Gates had said about primary health care. And you know, how we are lacking in those, just those basic things. And was, we, we asked the question, was it worth us spending 400 billion to go and get, um, what's it called, COVID-19 vaccines when even our primary health care system is not even a par, it's not up to standard, you know basic sicknesses that people are dying from every single day you know would, would suffer from even just i mean would we care brother if just upgrading our primary health care system you know COVID 19 is there yes but we do not have those high numbers you know but let me hear your thoughts you know about the immunity inequality and what are the current figures because this report that you gave us was on the 29th that you did it what are the current figures now yeah. is africa receiving jobs now and what, what where are we currently today as of today okay uh, as of today of course like i said in the article uh, africa is still left behind um the u.s for example has gotten nearly 50 million um, doses of the vaccine over 11 million people in the country have, have gotten both doses, like the first and the one that you take after about 21 days. Um, in countries like Israel, about 6 million people have gotten the 
job across the world. Of course, when I read that, school, we had over we had about 80 million people who had gotten um, the vaccine. Today, we have 159 doses that have already been administered. And of all that, less than 100,000 has been administered in Africa in just five countries. So we have Egypt, we have Seychelles, we have um, Guinea, we have Morocco, and then um, one other island country. So it's still not mainstream in Africa. A lot of people are still not getting the vaccine anytime soon. And of course, the gap is getting a lot more. Even a country like South Africa, so when I read the article, they have 1.43 million cases. Now they have 1.48, which means they've had at least 50,000 additional cases within that period of time. Mm -hmm. And they've not been able to get their hands on the vaccine. In fact, um, the South African variant is said to be resistant to the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is expected to come to Africa shortly. So South Africa would have to um, shift over to maybe the Pfizer vaccine to, or maybe the Moderna vaccine, basically. So as we are seeing the way things are going, it's not likely that the vaccines become like mainstream for, in fact, if you look at the numbers, even the COVAX facility, we are looking at um, vaccinating 20% of Africans by the end of 2021. Hmm. So it's, we are still at a, we are still far from where we should be. Okay, so let's talk about this implications, this poverty. Hmm. When we say 90 million people, or oh, AK, do you want to come in? Oh no, you. I think that your question is a follow-up because I was going to ask it. So if your question is a follow-up, I think you should go first. Um, because I was going to ask on um, another thing, actually. Oh, okay. So I was just going to say that, what does this mean to us, Tijani? Because 90 million Nigerians living under extreme poverty, right? And um, mm. COVID-19 COVID is something that is easily transmittable. It's not something... I mean, for me, I think um, we have a lot of challenges in this country. Maybe COVID is not one of those. Maybe that's why God has just been good to us, that the numbers are low. But what does this portend for us, you know, if we say that there is immunity um, inequality with 90 million people living on, even, even with the people that are not living under that abject poverty, you know, should anything happen, what, what would be the implications? Okay, so the way to look at this is that it's a question of half full and half empty. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a narrative that has been going around in Nigeria that... Um, COVID-19 is the disease of the rich. So what this does to us is to reinforce that narrative, to say, oh, the people who are going to get the vaccine first are the rich. And of course, that's what we are seeing across the world. Mm -hmm. So if the vaccines eventually come to Nigeria, according to the plans that we already seen on ground, uh, the people that are taking it first, uh, the president, the um, governors, the senators, the ministers. So it would, we are, we are doing two things at the same time. Now, the government would say that they're trying to um, re reinforce the thoughts, basically make the people come to a point where they can say, okay, the president took it, for example. So if the president can take it and it's fine, then maybe I can take it too. We might be thinking that that's what we're trying to do. But on the other side, what we are also trying to do is that the rich people would get the vaccine first. So we put that um, thinking in the hearts of Nigerians that this is what is happening within the country at this point in time, and it's going to continue like that for a longer period of time. And so if, okay, so let me, let me, let me use an example. We expect to get 16 million um, doses of AstraZeneca vaccine this month, or by before June, basically. And when that happens, how do we then say, okay, who are the first 16 million? When we are making that decision, Nigeria has to be conscious to make sure that we don't just give to the rich and somehow sideline those people who are considered poor within the country context. Okay. That would be miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, okay. Okay, I was, I was saying that that would be a miracle, what you just explained. Um, mm. <laughs> but... My question is, in your in your article, you postulated that inequality, this inequality that we're facing now, 
could have been avoided mm. if we had gotten into an earlier partnership. And I want you to expound on that. Do you, you know, why do you believe that, you know, we could have avoided this if we had done the right thing? Did you think we had the resources and the power to pull it up? And what would that right thing be, Abby? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. I we could have we could have found a way around this. Now we say today that we want to spend four hundred billion on purchasing vaccines. Now, what other countries did, which was what we should have done, was to say this four hundred billion, um, maybe Pfizer or Moderna, I just give it to one of the companies and say, "Think. We know that you have not found the vaccine yet." but we know that you will find it, or we're supporting the science that is going on here. And then when we put that money in, then they go into development. We have a pre-production contract with them, such that when it becomes available, we become one of the first countries to get vaccine. That was the deal Israel had, the UK had, the US had, um, UAE had. So basically, if we, we know that we were going to buy the vaccine anyway, and we had about a year, in quotes, to prepare for this situation. But what we did was hold our money, watch until the vaccine was available, but it's not available to us. And then we are now going to say, okay, now we have money to buy. But these people are saying, oh, yes, you have money to buy, but it's like 20 countries have paid before now, supported the science, and now they have to get before you get. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. This uh, this COVID-19 matter, I am thinking in my head because I heard that some of our professors had submitted some of their testing, I mean, sorry, some of their um, vaccine um, samples, rather, that they are trying to develop also. They've also submitted it. I just heard that, I think, yesterday. So I'm wondering, <laughs> you know, you're talking about inequality and you're tying it just to the fact that the poor people cannot access um, um, the vaccines. Do we really even need these vaccines? Based on your research, you know, as it comes to COVID-19 and the African numbers, do we even need the vaccines? I think as long as we belong to the people, and of course, you know, people have said um, the world is a global village, and somebody said during the pandemic that the world is now a digital sitting room. Yeah. So as long as we live within that space, as long as we are going to be traveling, as long as we are going to be mixing with other people from other countries, I feel like we need the vaccine. However, we do not need it as, um, we do not have a dare need for it as many other countries do. So for example, I was looking at the fatality numbers today. We've had 1,710 deaths in a period of one year. Mm -hmm. Now, if we've had that, we've also had one, one hundred and uh, over one over one hundred and thirty thousand cases. Now, it shows that less than one percent, or about one percent of the people who get the virus die. Mm. So it means that there are ways in which we have treated the virus over the course of the we year the vaccine. that we can for persons that have a certain kind of immune system. People that we can say, okay, this person is dealing with this well. This person is not the okay. So I had a particular example where a friend took a COVID test and the person was not feeling well. About three, four days later, the person was good. And then maybe like a week after that, the person got the results that was positive. But at that point, the person had beaten COVID. So that kind of person, without the vaccine, the immune system is strong enough to resist COVID. But the question is, we don't know whose immune system is strong enough. So People who have been there, who have survived, they know now their immune system is good enough. But people who have been there and have died, they know that their immune system is not strong enough. The question will now be, are you ready to take the gamble to say, I'm not taking the vaccine, I'll just like to test my immune system? Hmm. But I think a lot of us Nigerians have been testing our immune system. Don't you think that the numbers that are just, uh, these low numbers that we're talking about is because... We did not, we, we all, not we did not, we still haven't gotten our testing right in terms of, you know, because all these countries that you're talking about, the way they have 
um, large um, 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 positive the capacity test. to test yes, the large number Yes, it's the people. capacity for testing that is making you see the large numbers because COVID-19, I must have easily caught COVID maybe five, six times because I have not, say, I have not stayed in my house. I come to work every day and somebody will tell me in the office here that they have malaria. Okay, I'll be looking at them with one corner eye. I see somebody coughing. <laughs> I see, so because, I mean, the thing is, is because COVID is just like malaria, right? For us in Nigeria. So, oh, I'm feeling feverish. I have cough. You know, I'm having a headache and all of that. So you know that the reason our numbers are low is because um, our testing is not as high as other parts of the world. And that's why I'm saying that I am very sure that the numbers for COVID-19 cases in Nigeria are much more. So now that we, we know, we're assuming that is the reality, why do we even need to focus on vaccine, right? Why do we need to? That's my question all the time. Why do we need to focus on vaccine? You know, you are telling me that, oh, yes, travels and everything. Well, I, I agree. But should we not get to that point where we say, okay, you know what? If your immunity can carry it, let your immunity carry it. And let us carry the money and I'll spend it on something that is more pressing in Nigeria. <laughs> oh, I don't know what we're already doing. Is, isn't, that what we, aren't that, isn't that how we're living? The way we're living, head community, the immune system can carry, carry. So because there's nothing really that we have really done. Even the measures that have been put in place. So they say everyone wear a mask or, you you know, there's punishment. I've not so I saw a few people in the news today, they were punishing. But if you go out every day, you and I, everybody on this platform, you would see the whole mass of people not wearing masks and mm -hmm. nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. so I think that the, this already head community is already in play. Absolutely. I, 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 don't, I don't know about Jennifer. Uh, is Jennifer there now? I'm yes, here. she is. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We have like a minute to go on a break. Yeah, um, I agree with what um, Uwa is saying and what um, um, Akanima has also said. But I have a question here. Yeah? I know that um, there is immunity inequality currently going on. And as Jani has said, it was because um the nigerian government did not make preparations on time to actually pay for the vaccine but now that we have gotten to this point how do we move forward okay um Tijan, this is the question for you what do you think that the government can, can do, do at this point for us to actually get the vaccine because i know that in as much as some people really don't care about the vaccine there are people who actually care about it especially those people who travel a lot okay. like you said I, Tijani, you will come in to answer that question, but we, don't, we need to just go on a very short break. When we return, you would answer Jennifer's question. Stay with us. We'll be right back.